So, dependence and addiction. There's a difference. You think I'm trying to make a point here? Large letters in red with an exclamation point? This is a key piece to understand about this medication. Dependence. Physical dependence is common, normal, expected. There's nothing wrong with dependence. Dependence just means, the definition, you're taking a substance which, if stopped abruptly, is going to result in withdrawal symptoms or some kind of physical consequences. Examples. Somebody with diabetes on insulin. Are you dependent on the insulin? Now, there's another definition. It's something you need. I'm not using the need definition. I'm using the medical definition. So if you stop taking your insulin abruptly, will there be withdrawal symptoms or physical consequences? Yeah, your blood sugar is going to go to 2,000. You're going to be in a diabetic coma in the ICU. Somebody with hypertension or high blood pressure medication. Stop your blood pressure medication abruptly. Will there be withdrawal or physical consequences? Yeah, your blood pressure is going to go to 2,000 and you're going to be in the ICU with a heart attack or a stroke. Antidepressants. Stop the antidepressant abruptly. No quotation marks. Honest to God withdrawal symptoms. And some weird ones. Electric shocks and honest withdrawal symptoms. I really like this one. We are all dependent on food. Remember the definition. You are taking a substance which if stopped abruptly will have physical consequences. Stop food abruptly. And yet some of us are addicted to food. There's a difference. Another example of dependence, buprenorphine. You have physical dependence on buprenorphine. If you stop it abruptly, you will have withdrawal symptoms. That's dependence, but what about addiction? So here's, this is just one line of a long definition of addiction from uh, American Society of Addiction Medicine. Addiction is a primary chronic disease of brain reward, motivation, memory, and related circuitry. Again, NIDA, National Institute on Drug Abuse, Addiction is a chronic relapsing brain disease characterized by compulsive drug seeking and use despite harmful consequences by long lasting structural and functional changes in the brain. And again, here's the sources for that stuff. This is a summary list that I put together. People who have been here to other sessions have seen this list before. So let's look at Suboxone. Uh, by the way, I've been talking about buprenorphine and if I slip and say Suboxone, I'm not pushing Suboxone because there's Suboxone, there's Subutex, there's Subzol, there's Bunivale. I'm using Suboxone in the generic term, like give me a Kleenex, make me a Xerox copy. So if I use Suboxone, I'm not pushing the brand name, but it's easier because people know the word Suboxone. So let's look at Suboxone um, uh, along with, uh, uh, in, in reference to this list, craving. Oh man, I can't, I can't wait till I get my next Suboxone dose. He said I gotta wait till five, but I gotta take it right now. I can't wait till I get it. I pose the question, anybody who has ever been addicted to opioids, has anybody in here ever forgotten to take their heroin? Have you ever forgotten to take your oxycodone? Their smiles and head shaking, no, of course not. It is not uncommon for people to forget to take their Suboxone they do okay. So in terms of craving, again, kind of similar. I've got to have that Suboxone. I can't wait till five. I can't wait till six. Loss of control. Oh man, I only meant to take two Suboxone today and I ended up taking five. Huh? No. Doesn't happen. Usually. There are some ex ex exceptions to that and that calls for some discussions with the person. But basically, no. Continued use in spite of negative consequences. The main negative consequence of Suboxone is constipation. And we can fix that. Giving up or reducing social or recreational activities, being on Suboxone allows you to resume these activities. Disruption of relationships, being on Suboxone allows you to be settled down and reestablish relationships again. Impact on work, again, same thing, being on Suboxone. It lets you get back to work, lets you be productive again. Tolerance, there is no tolerance with Suboxone. Tolerance means you've got to take more and more and more. I'll explain in a later slide why there's no tolerance. In fact, there is, there is no term like this, I made this up, but there's almost reverse tolerance in that some people after they've been on it for a while can actually reduce their dose and just reset at a lower dose. Withdrawal, yes, there's withdrawal. 
Okay, so that's one thing that does happen with Suboxone. Structural and functional changes in the brain. In the first session of this series, I put up slides of brain scans and showed the structural damage, the structural injury to the brain. Suboxone allows that damage to heal. And again, I'll explain why in a little bit. Relapse. Suboxone helps to prevent relapse. doesn't cause relapse. It helps to prevent relapse. You're not in relapse if you're taking Suboxone. It helps to prevent relapse. This is a quote from this pamphlet. This pamphlet, if you look on the back of it, it's uh, SAMHSA. Um, we, I defined SAMHSA. And it's on page 3, quoting directly. Buprenorphine is a medication used to treat opioid addiction. This is like taking medication to control diabetes or heart disease. It is not, these emphasis, is, emphasis by the way, is in the quote. I'm not making the emphasis, but it is not the same as substituting one addictive drug for another. Used properly, the medication does not create a new addiction. It helps to manage your addiction so the benefits of recovery can be maintained. It's a big deal. I've made the point in other presentations. Some people say that, well, um, heart disease, yeah, it's a disease because there's an organ involved. It's the heart. Uh, asthma, there's an organ involved. It's the lungs. Addiction, there's no organ. It's just you made bad choices. Okay. Well, there is an organ involved. It's called the brain. Here's a healthy brain. In this slide, the more red and the more yellow, the more normal the function. So here's a healthy brain, here's a coke brain. You can see the decreased function here. You can see the decreased function here. So yeah, there's an organ involved. It is a disease. And again, some folks, that's what the whole first presentation was, the first session was, that if you don't get the fact and accept the fact that it's disease, then why would I take medication? Why would I need medication? So it is a disease. Here's a heart, healthy heart, diseased heart.